I'm Francis Cunningham, and this is Peter Calhoun, and I'm introducing Peter because he is the curator of this exhibition. He hung it with uh, Robert Feynman together, lighted it, and there are about 60 paintings. It's a very interesting exhibition, the title of which is Grid and Off the Grid, and Peter, you might take it from there and say a few words. Okay, okay, uh, well, this, this is an exhibition that explores the uh, various uses of the grid, and uh, as you can see from the painting behind me, some some of the paintings are exclusively focused on uh, on the grid. Um, and it's a show of eight painters: uh, Violet Baxter, uh, Bill Kennan, Matt Valerie Mendelssohn, uh, myself, Francis Cunningham, uh, Robert Feinland, and well, Bill Kennan. I think I think I Robert 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 Robert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Simon Carr. Simon Carr. Um, and and um, uh, all of whom had some experience with the use of the grid. And uh, a number of these painters are urban landscape painters. Uh, half of them live here at West Beth. And uh, the, uh, the the grid is something which uh, is almost unavoidable when you're painting urban landscape. It's something which you encounter in, in the landscape itself. And it's often becomes uh, a part of the work, a part, not just a part of the process, but a part of uh, the final result. Uh, uh, the grid has been used as a tool to, to construct paintings for, for many, many years, going back hundreds, maybe thousands of years. but. Uh, in, in our century, um, there have been a few which have made use of the grid in such a way that it, it becomes almost an autonomous element and uh, it, it, as important, every bit as important as color or light or other aspects of drawing. And uh, uh, that's about all I can... That's a good, yeah. that's a good introduction. So I'll take it from okay. here. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. We're, we'll start here with Robert Ludwig's paintings, which Peter uh, spoke of a moment ago. And it's the grid, but it's not a hard-edged grid. It isn't a Mondrian kind of grid. It's a very tonal painting. Uh, I think as Valerie Mendelssohn said, it reminds her in a way of Pompeii, partly the reds, uh, the, the tonality uh, that he uses. and. I feel very uh, a kind of an imaginative sensitivity in here between the, the line and the, and the shape and, and the grid. We can move over here and we'll see the grid in a cityscape. If you could see the organization of the edges and the softness and the, and the color, uh, how it works, wonderful little passages. Uh, scrapings in here, people walking on the street. And if you start from over here on an angle and you walk towards this painting, you're not really frozen into having to look at, for, look at it from head on, but as you get closer and closer and closer to it, it's as if, boom, that street light turns on. Uh, the things happen when you look at uh, these paintings, when you're looking it's something that isn't a locked-in frozen bridge, you might say, where your station point is in Renaissance paintings in one position. And then over here, what a different kind of painting Bill Kennan uh, makes. I think Robert Ludwig was, was saying that it, it's uh, almost surrealistic. But look at the geometry in here underlying this very uh, kind of amazing reddish colors in here, but the severity of that overpass, and then these floating tires, do you see, and the ellipses, of the shapes in here. Or the painting, Kennan's painting here, he seems to really enjoy the circle, as Peter was pointing out, 
and the ellipse, which is a circular perspective, that kind of form, and the way it works, again, with the, with the lines and this wonderful Jersey City view of a church in, in wintertime. Look at all the fog and softness and the, and the hardness and the relationship uh, of these elements to each other. Very interesting painting. I've seen the show three times, and uh, the more I look at it, the more I'm enjoying it. And this other painting over here, which, uh, uh, which again, it's, it has a distance in there. It's, it, it, the ellipse is placed in a very abstract way, uh, right in the lower portion center, so to speak. But it, it sets up for me the fact that you're looking at a painting, you're not looking at a photographic kind of realism. So there's an, an element of uh, what is going on in here. You might, you might just look at this wall. Having taken this grid aspect and off the grid aspect of, of play back and forth between elements in the urban landscape and as you will come to see in, in the landscape itself. Uh, that is a Canon painting. This by Violet Baxter. I, when I first saw this painting, I was back from it probably 30 feet. And what struck me was, was this, the power of that, that uh, rectangular rhomboid shape, uh, a very purple shape. And I saw it as a shape. And uh, again, you can see how these diagonals set it up and the vertical set it up and then you have cars and trucks and urban life but this shape just just caught me and then as I got closer to it you see it's the entrance to a warehouse building and, uh, makes me feel that it's related to the Kennan painting over there that we just saw with the geometric element and this is one of my paintings of uh, Te Tel Aviv you're uh, three minutes from the beach, looking at Bauhaus. Uh, I know some of the great Bauhaus architect and that he influenced uh, the buildings in Tel Aviv. These are buildings based on his designs, the high rise, the sculpture, and the little, it's a very old German park there, the letter to Iran. Iran was an Israeli uh, soldier who lost his life. And Peter Calhoun, I think it's a nice combination of uh, those of these paintings on this wall. Peter has been doing a, a lot of painting on the high rise, uh, the high line, I think it's called the high line. And uh, I walked it a, a couple of weeks ago. And many, many paintings there. Very delicate, light, beautiful play the light and the way the light falls on these buildings and very, very painterly if you get up close, you see. It isn't an outlining of every, the places where the very strong geometry and places a very soft suggestiveness all working together in the, in the same piece. Do you want to say it's on the grid and off the grid? Okay. Um, and I, I enjoy these two paintings here, which I'm going to finish this wall. A Violet Baxter again. Geometry, light, air. How much an artist selects. It's just so interesting. And then the, the, the play you might say the complementary colors of the yellow and the purple, how they work in space and uh, how the whole design is organized on a two-dimensional surface and yet is spatial at the same time. It's just uh, gives me great pleasure. Go into this room. Here we have a series of paintings by uh, Robert Ludwig. This is one of mine here, of uh, woods and a, a great boulder in Maine. And I think Peter and Robert Feynman, they hung the show very well to bring out the abstract properties, uh, the geometric properties in, in uh, still life, and a rather landscape taken from sight, and these purely 
non-figurative pieces. Here's another painting of mine over here. These were in the woods at uh, Palinville. That painting and the pond over there. It's the edge of a, a pond. It's, it's beautiful in the Catskills how peaceful, how quiet uh, everything is, how different the landscape was uh, from the Berkshires in which I grew up and which I painted so much. Uh, how much you give up and get to the space back in there. Uh, I think it's got the quietness of the place. And then over here, Robert Feynman will talk more a little bit later about uh, aspects of Feynman's uh, cityscape painting. He's very impassioned about the city. And he's done uh, an extraordinary amount of work to take situations here. I think this is, say, I have left the titles behind, but I think this may be the old St. Patrick's Cathedral. I believe they tore that nave down, and you can see uh, the, uh, the machinery, the things are happening here. He's painted synagogues and churches, buildings in New York before they're destroyed and before they're gone. And it's a real documentation. Hyatt Mayer, the great, uh, and he was a great curator of prints and drawings at the Metropolitan Museum. I remember saying now, it must have been 40 years ago at least, uh, that the, 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 New York had never produced a city painter, a real city painter. Well, one thinks of Hopper and so forth, but I think, I wonder what he would say about this show with Calhoun's paintings at uh, and find them cityscape paintings to see. I think a lot is going on, the changeability of the new world. And this painting, in which he's done all kinds of things with a perspective, do you see, uh, in, this, in this building. When I first looked at it, it was disorienting. And then you get acclimated to what is going on here. And it's close to the way the eye sees. The eye is moving continually in nature and things on the periphery of the, of the coma vision are going to be tilting upward or downward depending whether they're above or below your horizon line. You know, this kind of thing. And there's extraordinary work in this little strip, which when you're back from the painting, you don't see right away. You see, you know, they just see little pieces of color. But the whole city is laid out in this little area above the, above the uh, white warehouse building. On this wall over here is a, a painting of mine on the left of, of uh, the Tumacacari Mission, very close to the Mexico border in, uh, in uh, Arizona. I think Peter picked a selection of my paintings of different places, from, from Tel Aviv to Arizona to the Catskills to May. Uh, the adaptability of tone in different climates and different areas. Uh, I enjoyed that aspect. And this is a, a beautiful painting of Valerie Mendelssohn. We'll go and we'll take a look at more of her. Again, when you get away from it, things blend in your eye. I think that must be another Valerie. If I call your attention, if you can get a shot at that building of the Robert Finelands that we were talking about with the cityscape behind, from this oblique angle, how much depth there is, uh, how you really, really go back into space. And having tried to set it up in the beginning with a beautiful painting with a street light that turns on, as my daughter said, when you get up close to it. These paintings are not designed like Renaissance paintings to be seen in the frozen of the book station floor. I think we want to look at this big painting of uh, Simon Carr. And what Peter said when I first talked with him about 
this exhibition is that Simon Carr takes the grid and just boils around inside it, so to speak. I mean, very uh, forceful planes, areas of pain. Having just walked from the subway here past Abingdon Square, uh, I feel as though the experience that I had just walking from the, the uh, along 12th Street and past Abington Square is, is he's got something. This is a fascinating part of the city to me, living on the Upper West Side, the buildings and people and the smallness here. Uh, I think the painters in this exhibition have, have caught this. We're going to look at the, what I call the West Beth painters before going into the Dickinson vocabulary and training, which I have, Peter Calhoun has, Robert Feynman has, and Valerie Mendelssohn. I wanted to make certain statements confined to uh, these four painters, and not to not do justice to the others, but I want to, I want to make sure that the other painters, which work so, I think, so wonderfully, I think it all works together, are really represented. And over here on this wall, William Kennan, uh, these are aqua tents. There's an oil painting of his. We saw the oil painting of this out in the front. Very, very interesting the way he works with realistic elements and takes them away. I don't know if surreal is the right word or not. paintings. It's from her studio and you get her reflection in the, in the windows and the city behind and you're indoors and outdoors at the same time. Uh, are we on the grid? Are we off the grid? Or are we both? Simon Carr, again, boom, a great deal of force. Uh, these two paintings. When I first saw the show, I was particularly taken by this painting of a, of a city street and snow with cars in the street, one thing or another. I was here in the 1947 blizzard as a boy. And, uh, I, I, I just feel shivery cold, and I feel the city very much in this painting. But there are two more, three more Simon Carr paintings here. Let's stop here for a moment and just look at this painting by Peter Calhoun. And what a beautiful, true sense of light that is, and how you plunge down the subway, I guess it's a subway or underpass. Uh, no, I think it's you're on top of the, of the high line and you're, you're looking down on the way out. Again, these very, very suggestive, beautiful color, very, very suggestive passages and strength of the geometry and the play of light and shape. And gee, painting such a wonderful thing. I'm going to go into the New Brooklyn School and change gear. I say New Brooklyn School but because I'm really talking about <clears throat> a training that came through Edwin Dickinson of color spots, one piece of color next to another. We've made many, many a video about this, and it's a shared language. And what I'd like to point out in this exhibition is, is that Valerie Mendelssohn, who you see over here, and again here, Robert Feynman, you see here, these, these painters are, have their own voice within a common vocabulary. And I just would like to say a little bit about, about that and some of the specific things about that uh, vocabulary. If you look at this painting here, for example, by Robert Feynman, 
When I first saw it up close, it was, I just felt some of a kind of a nervous energy in it. Again, partly to do with it, with the uh, curves and the changing lines and the perspective and what's going on in here. And I didn't really see the painting. If we can come and get away from it and stand out there. It's one of the characteristics of the color spot painting is that I think because it's done from sight, not all of it, but most of it is done from sight, based on sight. The actual color value notes will work in such a way that you get a tremendous sense of depth, way beyond where you would if you were actually looking at something in the nature. And I felt even further back out of here than in Rome. That I was really getting the sense of what the volumes in space are. And I go back past that window and go over the rooftops, and then you get a bit of the Hudson. I guess this was done in the studio in Dumbo. Uh, you get part of the island behind it. Terrific space. Point that out. Uh, up close, you see, when you're up close, uh, you get the brushwork, you get all kinds of, one kind of thing. I'm talking about the space back in here. You need to get back from the painting. You need to get back from the painting further uh, than you do with, I think, any other form of painting, and uh, any other form of painting. I think there is something in the vocabulary of the color spots that uh, reads from space and working in a, a, a different spaces and different station points so that you're not locked in. You're, I think it's much closer to the actual myself, to the actual experience of nature. And look at what a beautiful passage this is in here. I mean, the, the wetness on the top of the, of the roof there. That's such pure poetry, pure poetry, and, and brilliant brushwork as you stand back and you look at it. I mean, it's, it's really got the reflections of the building and the whole thing, boom, 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 hit like that. Very, very satisfactory. And then this, oh, my word, on to, to find them, which he, he doesn't hesitate to combine. Uh, what's there with what's going to be there, or what's about to be there, and what's been. So he's, he's put parts of a construction of a building which is now present that has blocked this view altogether. Uh, Peter Calhoun says that he's really is, he's, he's on a mission about New York. It's a real sense of the turbulence of New York and the change and uh, how things are, are not the same practically month by month. I think this is St. Patrick's, uh, Patrick's Cathedral on 42nd Street here. And when he started the painting, this was a, a, a building lot, and then you see all of this view is, is cut off. My friend Eric Rosenfeld said, oh yes, I know this well. I mean, this is a part of town. Uh, so it's a combination. It's a thing that a, a, a painter can do, take, uh, various aspects, and, and let's look over here at this Feynman painting. The cars whizzing by and their blur, and the power and the force of the geometry of those buildings behind. And uh, I love things like this, right at the border, right at the edge, doing a major structural for major structural painting. The way the painting is built. And here you see something else is coming up. A new building is going to be that view. Uh, probably no longer exists. A rather fine at this time, he goes to Juan Higgin in the summer. And uh, these two paintings, Eric Rosenfeld is particularly impressed and caught by this, which is a which is a road uh, all wet and flooded in the woods on Monhegan. Oh, he's got so beautifully the light, the way the light comes through these, what are they, cedar trees or whatever they may be. 
And then, Peter had been explaining about the grid to Eric uh, Rosenfeld, and he, he talked to me on the telephone yesterday about this painting, and he just found it a marvelous painting because you get in the reflections a continuation. You get the sense of the grid underlying this very, uh, you might say, wild scene in, in nature. One of my favorite paintings, well, two of my favorite paintings in the, in the whole show, and in the Valley's works are here. This, this painting of, of uh, snow, Valerie Madison. I know very, very few painters who give you such a feel and having grown up in the country, I love the snow and the bushes and the kind of color and the kind of thing. That is a kind of day you can feel the wetness of it, you can feel the sun, you can feel uh, the sensitivity to the, to the uh, place. And here is a piece that she worked largely, I think she had very uh, unfocused photographs and done more out of the head, but once you work from the nature, you have a free in the language to do all kinds of things. And this is her husband, uh, Jean-Francois's place up in, uh, outside of Paris. That was a, a flowering tree of whatever sort it was. As you get close to it, you see how abstract it is. It's just pieces of color, do you see, coming together in the eye. But what beautiful pieces of color, I mean, what beautiful tone. And then you kind of discover things like this, uh, this building behind, you know. It takes time to look at a painting. Any painting that's worth looking at is worth living with and spending real time with it. They yield more and more uh, information as you go along. And again, Valerie said this painting by, by Baxter is a, is a kind of a futurist kind of painting. A lot of stuff going on in here. The vocabulary is different, but it works. But I want to get back to the point again of the, of the, of the Dickinson color spot and the, and the fact that one changes station points and one has to be able to get away from the painting. There is a real way to look at paintings. And if people will only slow up and not talk to other people and not listen to a docent or anybody else, but simply look at the paintings, the paintings will tell you how they want to be looked at. Whether they're cave paintings or from, from the Ordination period or the paintings of today. If you can manage to take in Valerie Mendelssohn's snowscape from back here, we must be a good, wouldn't you say, 50 feet from that painting. And look at how it holds out in depth, as though you could walk into that space of that painting from here. You're not going to get that, I don't believe, in any other form of painting, whether it's from the 17th century through the 19th century. You won't get it in Corot or Courbet or Impressionist painting, this sense of depth. And it's interesting to see it with the Finland cityscape. And if we look over here to this large still life by Peter Calhoun, the same thing applies. I mean, it's a, all kinds of amazing objects in depth. The color spot is a piece of color that's laid down on the canvas right next to its neighbor. It isn't the case of drawing. Uh, separated from color. It isn't the case of drawing something and coloring it. It's a piece of color next to a piece of color next to a piece of color. And when you look at it up close, that's all they are, pieces of color. Pieces of color. And more often than not, you can't really tell what the object is up close. And when they're painted, they're not painted one thing at a time, one thing at a time. It's kind of ultra kind of realism. They're painted by observed color notes. So very, very abstract shapes, arcs and angles, shapes of color value.
And then as you move away from it, not just moving away, but moving around it, moving over here, for instance, or coming and moving over here, you can see it uh, from this angle. And you, you have a whole pattern of shapes right from here into the painting. And then as we get back here, we begin to see hats and bottles and things, perhaps in a, a more in a more defined way. Pots, bricks, parts of bricks. And what seems just uh, very abstract pieces of color are coming together uh, into objects with a relationship in space. So, we come back again where we were once before here and see how, how, how it works. Look at, how, look at the design of the, of the oranges there uh, and how they work with the shapes of the drapery in the background. It becomes very, very, to me, very, very grand. It's a very, very grand still life. And I get its grandeur more as I get away from it. Which is one of the great beauties of this West End Gallery is that it has, uh, allows for a great depth. You can get away from the work and look at it. And I think with that, we'll conclude. How's that?